Ta fáilte mhór romh go dí rella glasni in the new. Um, tá mí don almost a hurt the the old uh, TV in the barra. Um, we have a full uh, we have a full schedule of events today. Um, firstly, we're going to lay a wreath at the the grave of um, volunteer Kevin Barry. Then we will um, we will lay a wreath at the Manchester Martyrs cenotaph, and then we will um, then we will lay a wreath at the grave of a uh, deceased NGA member, Jerry McKeown. It's not a limo pull board. I guess it's more on privilege done from the hand show new live in you. It does. We're gathered here at the Mountjoy Martyrs Monument where we will lay a wreath in memory of volunteer Kevin Barry, who was executed in Mountjoy Jail on the 1st of November, 1920. While here, we remember the 10 Mountjoy Martyrs, the forgotten 10, who were all executed by Britain's hangman in Mountjoy. The role of honor includes volunteer Kevin Barry, executed 1st of November, 1920, Volunteers Patrick Moran, Thomas Whelan, Francis Flood, Bernard Ryan, Thomas Bryan, and Patrick Doyle, executed on the 14th of March, 1921. Volunteer Thomas Trainer, executed 25th of April, 1921. Volunteers Patrick Marr and Edmund Foley, executed the 7th of June, 1921. All brave and proud Irish men who sought to defend Ireland's honour by taking on the British presence in Ireland. For 80 years, these men lay in prison soil. If not but for the dogged determination of people like Kathleen White, Tess Kearney, and the National Graves Association, we would still be trying to remember these men within prison walls. We are pleased to see so many of the Barry family present today uh, who were also very instrumental in, in achieving the reinterment along with the likes of Peter Gahan, Sean Sherwin, John Ogo Callaghan and many others. We also have relatives here today of the Invincibles. These relatives do not have the same opportunity to pay their respects in a dignified manner to their relations. The five executed invincibles, Joseph Brady, Daniel Curley, Michael Fagan, Thomas Caffrey, and Timothy Kelly, still languish in prison soil. The National Graves Association are currently campaigning to have them exhumed and reinterred here, reinterred here amongst the many other heroes of Ireland's fight for freedom. This campaign is ongoing and although we face opposition from the powers that be, we are determined that we will see it through so that Irish people can visit unhindered the graves of these heroes. I will now call on Kevin Barry, nephew of Ogoch, Creevy in the Barra, to lay a wreath on behalf of the National Graves Association. Uh, I'll now ask Peggy Galligan to recite a prayer.
sort of why you got the faggy. I'll now ask Paddy Lennon of the National Graves Association. Paddy is going to read a poem, um, Kevin Barry by Countess Markovitz. We knelt at mass with sobbing hearts, cold in the dawn of day. The day for us, for him the night, who was so young and gay. Then from the altar spoke the priest. His voice ran thin with pain, bidding us pray a boy must die at England's hands again. The cruel English tortured him. He never shrank or cried. Sublime his faith, the gallows tree, he faced that day with pride. Proudly he gave his life for her, to whom his heart was given. His dying eyes knew freedom near, saw death the gate of heaven. Bright flaming dawn of a young life, simple and pure and brave, our childlike playful sacrifice, his end a felon's grave. His end, no end to lives like his. With us he lives always, bright through our night, a shining star, he lights for us the way. Christ who died for us, for love of us, tortured and bruised and chained, gives courage to such hero souls, unbending and untamed. Just an observation here, this is the grave of William Martin Murphy. It was a chap that caused the lockout of 1913. Just came across that there. Hello, you're listening to Count Richard von Kudenhove Clergy. Today is the 6th of November. I was just in Glass and Evans Cemetery here for the unveiling of a wreath to Kevin Barry there, who was assassinated on the 1st of November. And I'd like to start by thanking Irish Rose for being kind enough to put my last video up on her channel as uh, YouTube had given me a holiday. Manchester Martyrs, who were executed in 1867. I'm going to ask Neve Barry to lay a wreath um, in memory of the Manchester Martyrs. I'll now ask Jardine McCabe to say a prayer. Amen. <laughs> Um, as we know, Alan Larkin and Brian are buried in Manchester. Um, there's a, there is an ongoing campaign to, to have their bodies uh, repatriated, re exhumed and repatriated and reinterred here in Glasnevin. 
Um, the National Graves Association have had meetings with the Department of Foreign Affairs, but it's, it's an ongoing process. So now we're going to go down to the grave of um, deceased NGA member um, Jerry McGowan, and we're going to lay a wreath at Jerry's Jerry's uh, grave. Thanks. Just notice, just notice this here, a young lad of 11 years old, uh, 1835, how about that for uh, stonework? Uh, just a couple of comments as well since my last video, I had uh, I met some very interesting people, uh, one of them was a midwife and I asked her has there been an increase in miscarriage in the last two years and she says oh yeah it's up between 30 and 40 percent. So I suggested to her that could it be related to the vaccine, she said no absolutely not. And I said, well, I have an article here and I happen to have it on my persons. And it was the article from the newspaper in Brisbane where Dr. Luke McClinton had said that there was a connection between the taking cups, multiple cups of tea and uh, miscarriage and said that the rates of miscarriage had went from a normal 5 to 15% up to 75% and he was sacked from his job. Also, uh, I was talking to, to a young girl during the week who was fostered and her foster mother had threatened her with being thrown out of the home if she didn't get the vaccine if she didn't take a cup of tea so she reluctantly had uh, two cups of tea along with her 13 year old brother who was given the same message you know which uh, it, another aspect is this tragedy of people who are either adopted or in foster care if they have a difference of opinion with their carers uh, just as a another note uh, when I was younger, I used to cycle up the Dublin Mountains at the age of about 12 or 13 up to the Lamas Cross without knowing anything about it. And the little bit about Captain Noel Lamas, he took part in the, in the Rising of 1916 in the GPO and he was in the War of Independence and he was kidnapped in July 1923 outside O'Neill's hardware shop, which was in Exchequer Street. And his body was found in the Dublin Mountains, which had been mutilated and seemingly he had been beheaded and his hands chopped off. So rather gruesome stuff. But um, so this would be an aspect, as I say, of Irish history that I'll certainly be paying more attention of. OK, thanks for listening. Good afternoon. Good luck and God bless. Yeah.